The Biden administration's controversial disinformation government governance board is reportedly paused. This is just three weeks after its rocky rollout, and the woman to lead it is said to be out. This is Outnumbered. Hello, everyone. I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-hosts, Emily Campagno and Harris Faulkner. Also joining us, Shannon Bream and Joe Concha. Biden's disinformation board is now reportedly on hold following concerns. The board would police speech it didn't like and outrage over its chief, Nina Jankowicz, who pushed debunked Russian collusion claims and called Hunter Biden's laptop a Trump campaign tool. The Washington Post reporting now just three weeks after its announcement, the disinformation governance board is being paused. According to multiple employees at DHS, on Monday, DHS decided to shut down the board. By Tuesday morning, Jankowitz had drafted a resignation letter in response to the board's dissolution. Big news. Um, Joe Concha, I immediately thought, what lasted longer, CNN Plus or the disinformation board? <laughs> oh. So I decided to count, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, the disinformation board was three weeks, 21 days. Okay. CNN Plus was about, I think it was 24 days, but bad ideas, bad ends for both of them. Either way, both of them last three Scaramucci's, right? Yes, correct. You can't make three Scaramucci's. That, that's an issue, certainly. Uh, in this administration that thought that Putin price hike would resonate with American voters or blame Donald Trump for the crisis that is a catastrophe at the border, or didn't see COVID variants coming, or didn't see the Taliban coming. This, of all of those miscues, gaffes, vision, this is the worst of those ideas. And when they say they're hitting pause on this, no, you don't hit pause. You take the VCR and you throw it in the garbage, all right? This thing needs to be in the trash heap of history because government should not be monitoring free speech in any way, shape, or form because I think, I don't know, just spitballing here, it's going to be weaponized, everybody. And I, the, the, the blowback that this got forced them to do this. And Nina Jankovic, the, the Joy Reid, right, of, of Washington, D.C., in terms of misinformation, the last person they should have picked to, to run this. And Alejandro Mayorkas, who should be concentrating maybe on other things right now at DHS. Oh. Uh, shouldn't be uh, taking on more responsibility. It's like giving Kamala Harris more responsibility. It's not going to end well. No, it's not. Uh, my favorite is how the Washington Post reported this. It's as if they, you know, encapsulated the term from Hillary Clinton. This is a vast right-wing conspiracy. Listen to how they reported this, Harris. Jankowitz's experience is a prime example of how the right-wing Internet apparatus operates, where far-right influencers attempt to identify a target, present a narrative, and then repeat mischaracterizations across social media and websites with the aim of discrediting and attacking anyone who seeks to challenge them. Problem, Washington Post, here's what you left out of your article. I read the whole thing. Here you go. Nina Jankowitz, we have a wall. She's not someone who's totally innocent. She's not someone who's nonpartisan. Here are some of the things she said. She called the Hunter Biden laptop um, Trump campaign product. This is her view on the First Amendment. I shudder to think about a free speech absolutist. We're taking over more platforms. The Christopher Steele dossier, uh, she wow. said it provides some great historical context about the evolution of disinfo. <laughs> she said the Trump presidency would embolden ISIS. Russia's invasion of Ukraine would be much worse under Trump. We could go on and on. We only have an hour. Washington Post, somehow, none of it makes it into the article. So let's keep it up on the big wall for a second, because as you were going through there, I, I looked at one of her tweets. Listen to this last night. Chris Steele, yes, that Chris Steele, provides some great historical context about the evolution of disinfo worth a listen. So she was a fan of the man who was peddling lies. Mm -hmm. A fan. Yep. But she wanted to help us. And I use her in the past tense because, Joe, I don't agree. I, I, I think that if they do realign it, she won't be part of it. Of course. Right? And if they make it go away, I mean, they'll save themselves some, some headache before the midterm elections. But I, I do agree with you. They may not make it go away. But when you look at that, you better understand how there is this fabric among some in this administration that it's okay to hire somebody like that because they're all on the same page about how to use politics. Mm -hmm. Like she was using, yeah, that, all caps, Christopher Steele, where we know that that was a person that the FBI even deemed, well, maybe not the best source in the end. Well, that was before they had gotten everything out of him, I suppose, that they needed, and he had become, you know, part of the Russia hoax. But she, she didn't take, and I don't know, you could never take a tweet down, but I never heard her clap back on anything she was being accused of when we used this stuff. She never clapped back anywhere. It was time for her to go. 
I did disagree with you on one thing, though. What's that, Harris? Mm -hmm. um, not seeing the Taliban coming is a bigger deal than this. I would think so. Yeah, because, because that cost us lives last year. Right. And I know you were just kind of, you know, toying with some ideas there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we, we should have seen them coming because they had been coming for so long. They took over Kabul in the time it takes to order a And pizza. we lost 13 service people right. at that to a airport. And military. a lot many more, a lot more, excuse me, during the war there. But so. indeed. I think it's a story of incompetence where, look, very different. You're exactly right. What happened in Afghanistan, the worst blunder of the Biden administration. But unprepared there, unprepared for the Ukraine invasion, um, unprepared for inflation, unprepared for supply chain, the tragedy of the delayed treadmill. And then on this issue, it's funny when you read this Washington Post piece, I totally know what happened. This was Department of Homeland Security going to the Washington Post. You can see where they said, oh, the White House here. They didn't tell legislative staffers. They didn't tell congressmen and women about Jenkins. They didn't defend her enough. It's as if the White House wasn't prepared. Shocker, Shannon. Hmm. Well, and the interesting thing is, too, this is written by Taylor Lawrence, who has her own issues and controversies when it mm -hmm. comes to information and being online and how that all plays out. But in the piece, she says there was this derogatory connotation of the Ministry of Tr Truth or Orwell's 1984 because it felt that way to a lot of people. And then she says neither the board nor Jankowitz had any power or ability to declare what is true or false. So what was the point of this whole thing? <laughs> I'm left after reading this article completely confused, more than I was before about this disinformation governance board. What was the purpose of it? What functions was it going to perform? Because now we're told it was completely harmless and toothless. There was nothing to it. It was never going to do anything bad to anybody or make, you know, calls about what is true or false. So what was the point? Of so why did they need a liar leading it? It's or exactly. anyone leading it, like what was do? the actual what mission of this to? thing? Emily, I have a, a, a sinister reason why I believe that was in the article. So Republicans, online conservatives, critics, widely compared this to the Ministry of Truth from George Orwell's novel. Shannon's right, the exact line is this. In fact, the board itself had no power or authority to make any operational decisions. We heard that from the Washington Post. We heard it when the board first came out. It's because the government can't regulate speech. That would be unconstitutional. So this is cover for exactly what they were doing. That's exactly right. For their censorship that they engage in all the time. We know it's always a bad idea. We know it's antithetical to a free republic and also unconstitutional. To me, this is such a fail, such a joke. She was the chief of spreading disinformation and misinformation, outright lies, you named a ton. And now she's the victim? She can dish it, but she can't take it. She got a couple mean tweets. So the administration is going <laughs> to fold like a deck of cards, something they thought was so important, right? It became a campaign pillar for them for a moment there, right? But all of a sudden, oh, just yeah, kidding. Oh, it was nothing. We didn't mean it. All of this is such a, a representation of what the administration is at all times, which is exactly that. They can dish it out. They can put out those narratives and stand behind it. They can, they can protest on the steps. But the second, in any way, there is pushback, they totally fold. I or they want to cancel you. Yeah. If you. Think can. about what and this that's White what House. This, was. this was the disinformation governance board slash cancel you if you don't do what we want you to believe what we want you to believe. And if you, you can't believe. take yep. mean tweets, JTV. you can't work at Fox News. Yeah, quick, quick point. And, and think about who is the overarching uh, uh, entity overlooking this administration, the White House, the Biden administration. Yes. What tweet did they put out just a couple of days ago Ooh. that right. there were yes. no vaccines yes. when Joe Biden entered office? There's literally photos of him getting a vaccine in December his arm. December 12th. And, it and was my screensaver for a while. Fauci yeah. in a rare moment came out and did not stand with the administration on that. But last I checked, I mean, as of two days ago, that tweet was still up. So Still up. A million people a day almost getting the vaccine. And it, Twitter not doing anything about it. And the disinformation board, I guess, won't be able to do anything. Well, they had 21 days. That would have been a great piece of disinformation. Two Scaramucci's, oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Two Scaramucci's. <laughs> that and CNN Plus. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.